Coming up, Sally Ann makes friends with an eagle. It's just beautiful, isn't she? <laughs> Nikki takes a dip with some nippers. That was an absolutely unbelievable experience. And Tim persuades some scary customers to open wide. Ooh. Nikki has gone to meet Inda and Rani. Lucky she's used to dealing with hyperactive youngsters. Is this what happens every morning? <laughs> yep, this is every morning now. This is what it's like to have twins. Feeding these ten-week-olds is sheer mayhem, especially if one suspects her sister is receiving special treatment. <laughs> the food fight isn't over yet, but Nikki has some welcome support from Patrick Martin Vig to deal with the toddler tantrums. The manager of Tiger Island at Queensland's Dreamworld has raised more than 100 tiger cubs, and the playful pair soon settles down and gobbles up brekkie. Big Buddha belly. Of course, like most babies, when the antics stop, they're adorable creatures no one can resist. She's looking sleepy. Not time for a nap just yet. Patrick needs to check how his Sumatran tiger twins are developing. She growing steadily? <laughs> yeah, they're getting sort of 100, 200 grams a day. Really? Yeah. Oh. Next in a busy schedule for these VIP tots, Inda and Rani are off on a guided tour of their new home. So what's with the cub car? It's a good way to get them around the park, and get some used to being in different vehicles. Not so fast, Dad. I've just had breakfast. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there is a serious side to exploring a fun-filled place like Dreamworld. It's important for these little fellas to get used to living in a theme park, seeing all the people and being around the rides. Oh. And seeing these less than ferocious toddlers on the prowl provides an unexpected delight for customers. But Inda and Rani seem to be having a lot more fun in terrain closer to their natural habitat. They're about to provide an unforgettable experience to 20 dedicated animal lovers who've queued for hours to get up close and personal with the cubs. Give a little pat on the backside. There you go. So, what did you think of that experience, Cherie? Oh, absolutely awesome. Yeah. Couldn't, you cannot replicate that experience. Can I put them outside? Dream World is part of a worldwide campaign to ensure that these critically endangered cubs don't become extinct. <laughs> There are only around 400 Sumatran tigers left in the wild. And unless things are done now, they probably won't survive another 10 or 15 years. So it's great to know that as well as being star attractions, Inda and Rani are helping ensure there'll be plenty more meet and greets like this, even when they're all grown up. <laughs> Put my hands down and this massive alligator just came up and went whack. I was actually bitten on the hand by a big Burmese python while training a volunteer. Dingo bite there. Got bitten by a Tasmanian devil. Bites and scratches are all part of a keeper's job at the reptile park. But one thing Tim and his team are hoping to improve is the medication used to treat those wounds. Today they're collecting swabs. Let's get, get out of the way, mate so that treatments can be tailored to specific animal bites. That's good. There's a good bit of slobber. Oh, well, in here is a scrub python. This is the world's third largest snake, Australia's largest python and snake. Its bite's not poisonous. But it has razor-like teeth, so when it bites, it easily penetrates the skin and bacteria from its mouth can get pushed in. I'm locked, mate. <laughs> Very strong, you know. These guys, you think it's just raw muscle. Yep, that's good. All right. Now, Obi's going to try and swap the top. You're right, mate. 
You're right. Go backwards on it. Look at them teeth. Ah, oh, I just get that coil. Nice and quick. Jeez, that's tight. Incredibly tight. Ah, oh, that's that right? Wow, that's so tight. Pretty scary, you know, for a moment there. I know Obi's here, but you can feel that pressure and you think maybe this isn't coming off. Which takes us to the park's hungriest and most dangerous residents. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Got him. They're just powerful, these guys, so we'll use the tree. That's what we want. We want that bacteria. It's actually the bacteria on their teeth and involved in their bite that Tim is after. I can see a bit of water off there, but that's okay, because that'll hold the bacteria. Ooh, look at that. So quick, you know, one mistake. Just watch out, he's gonna have a kick. Well, that looks pretty good. This is the last guy for today. Thanks, mate. Best not to push your luck with a gator that size. It's time to let this one go and get these swabs to some experts who can run a few tests. Tim is at Gosford Hospital to meet Steve Cameron, the emergency specialist. Good day, Tim. How are you going? Yeah, good, thank you. Tim hands over the swabs containing saliva from the scrub python and the alligator. What we're going to do is put them on a plate of jelly, yep. put them in the oven, and if there's any nasty bugs, we'll grow them over the next week. And as far as I know, no one's ever done this before, so okay. you're at the cutting edge. In the meantime, Tim and his team will be trying to avoid getting bitten. Isn't that right, Chuggy? <laughs> There's one right there. Hey. Having dreamed of working with birds of prey all of his life, Graham Coles is finally living his dream. It's not my career, it's my passion. I come to work every day and go, well. <laughs> While most animal lovers bill and coo over furry four-legged species, wedge-tailed eagles like Sabrina win Graham's heart. A lot of people don't realise that these predators, even in the wild, are affectionate to each other. Sabrina has bonded with Graham as she would with a partner in the wild. And she loves a cuddle. So how do you feel about her? Ah, oh, she's part of my family. How do, how do you describe that? Absolutely beautiful. Part of... It's like, like having a child. Graham has known Sabrina for nine years, almost her whole life. Eagle's primary sense is its eyesight. To keep her calm, Graham simply pops on a hood. That just calms her down. A little bit like, I suppose, blinkers on a horse. Sabrina is one of 30 native birds, ranging from imposing wedgies to a tiny Australian princess parrot at Graham's full flight birds of prey centre. How are you, fella? Hey? Hey? Luke Hare is full flight's education officer. And like Graham, he's formed trusting relationships with all the birds. And with one eagle in particular, Zorro. A while back, he, um, he was walking around in his aviary on the ground and he picked up a stick and he broke it. He had it in his talon and he broke it with his beak and he offered it to me. Um, and that's generally a sign of a courtship um, thing. So I think he feels that I'm his partner. Um. <laughs> Luke actually takes it as a bit of a compliment especially as he knows what eagles can do to their enemies. So I'm happy for him to think that I'm his girlfriend. <laughs> come on, come on. This is Tintin, a three-year-old barn owl. Barn owls have exceptional hearing. The feathers around their face channel the sound to their ears. If you see some of the falcons and hawks in flight, they can, they can really fly quickly. And so with her, because she doesn't achieve the speed that they do, she has this stealth. So when she flies, if you have a listen to her wings, they're very quiet, not much noise at all. Okay. Good boy, so I like it barking. Sid Vicious is a not-so-vicious barking owl. When they're not communicating sweet nothings to Luke, the 
the birds perform their natural behaviours as part of a daily show and travel to schools as part of a mobile education unit. It's a unique opportunity to get up close and personal with some protected species. She's just beautiful, isn't she? Molly's about three years of age. She's a brown falcon. Oh, there she goes again. Gorgeous. And if you're very lucky, you may even get the chance to have your own cuddle with an eagle. Sometimes Sabrina gets so relaxed and so calm, she actually falls asleep and starts snoring. She's just magnificent. Having an eagle fall asleep in her arms is an experience Sally will never forget. Just feel yourself relaxing when you watch the wonders of the ocean drifting by. Nikki is drinking it all in at Melbourne Aquarium, where you can see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different types of fish. Colours, shapes, sizes, it's nature's showcase. A marine wonderland and a veritable riot of colour. Hello. <laughs> Up above all this aquamarine beauty is a whole different world. It's where the monsters of the deep look even more ominous. Mickey is about to take a dive in these shark-infested waters. But first, a behind-the-scenes visit with resident vet Dr Rob Jones and some unusual patients. This is an arowana fish. It's a freshwater tropical fish and it hasn't been eating very well for the last few weeks. A liquid anaesthetic puts him into a watery slumber. Then Dr Jones inserts a tube into the fish's stomach to try and get some nutrition into him. After that, he should be fine. I think we put him back, Ali. Next stop is a turtle with a tilt. Look, this is an eastern long-necked turtle and he's from our um, billabongs and he was listing to one side. The poor little chap has been diagnosed with pneumonia, so he's been put on a course of antibiotics. He already looks like he's improving okay. and responding to the antibiotics. Now to a really slippery customer. First tricky manoeuvre is getting the stingray into a small holding pool. Never elegant. This feisty female has a problem that needs immediate attention. What we're looking at are these dental plates. The, the rays have two plates that are like grinding plates. Yep. And what's happened with hers is that they've grown too long. The protrusion has stopped her from feeding properly. Normally, the plates would wear down or be broken off. If this happened to her in the wild, she would actually starve to death. The dock will have to trim the grinders. As they're just like our fingernails, the process is quick and painless, especially as the patient is under anaesthetic. There you are, that one's come off quite nicely. Wow. The operation is a success. Good girl. All right. Wish me luck. OK, it's time for Nikki to take that dip. Over 2,000 people take the plunge every year at the Melbourne Aquarium. Today, Nikki's in expert hands with diver Mick Kahia. Now, it may be a bit disconcerting being on the other side of the glass, but it looks like the inhabitants are tolerant, if a little wary. That was an absolutely unbelievable experience. I think I was a little bit nervous. You've got the sharks coming towards you, you've got the stingrays, but it's, it's out of this world. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Nikki. A great time. experience. Loved it. James is taking a river cruise. Sounds relaxing, right? but it's probably best he doesn't get too laid back. 
the Melaleuca wetlands happen to be the natural habitat of the Australian saltwater crocodile. Ash Saxton is one of the guides and just loves his job working with these prehistoric reptiles, which can lose up to 2,500 teeth throughout their lifetime. Good boy. He's just dancing on his tail there. When they say keep your arms and head inside the boat, they're not joking. On your journey, you may even be lucky enough to witness the remarkable skills of the white-chested sea eagle. So they're doing a few flybys, they're just checking it out, making sure there's no crocodiles hanging underneath that bait. Well, they've obviously seen the crocs jumping. Crocodiles have an excellent sense of smell. They also have great hearing and can see in colour. However, they mostly rely on vibrations when it comes to catching prey. There are plenty more crocodiles involved in the farm side of the operation. Matt Plummer is proud of their breeding program. Hatchlings come out looking exactly like adult crocodiles and will grow up to 20,000 times their birth weight. If you just want to hang on to that one. Yeah. Newborns have a split right down their stomach because as embryos, they develop around the egg yolk itself. And the last thing they do is absorb that egg yolk. So they're born with a packed lunch, if you like. Within a couple of days, it will seal over and won't leave a scar. At this size, these guys are not so scary. But it's only a few months until... Oh. Gotta watch that. <laughs> the important message here is not to lean over the enclosure or dangle anything these guys can mistake for food. The majority of these guys are being bred for their leather, but that means the crocodiles are being saved. The wild populations were decimated by unsustainable hunting, and crocodile farming has taken a lot of pressure off those wild populations, which have re-established themselves. The world-famous Crocodile Attack Show is a daily event here and a must-see. The star of the show is Bart, and Drew is his human sidekick. <laughs> Fifteen years I've done that, still find that funny. As casual as Drew may seem, he has a very healthy respect for Bart's abilities. He is quite a dangerous animal, I mean, at this size. Fans are loving it. And why not? They get to experience a large saltwater croc doing what he does best. <laughs> Over at the reptile park, Tim is making a wake-up call. Meet Alira a gorgeous orphaned wombat. Come on, you're not going to like what I have to do, but we only have to do it once. Let's go. Tim to Obi. Go ahead. Mate, do you have two seconds to give me a hand with Alira in food prep? Like any little baby, Alira needs lots of TLC. In this case, that means weighing, microchipping and a checkup just to make sure she's healthy. So, we'll just have a general look and then give her a chip, eh? She's not going to be happy about it, but... No. You'll be all right. What did she weigh last time? Uh, last weight was 3.33 kilos. You look like a porky now. The first job is to weigh the bag to find out exactly how much little Alira has put on. You ready? There we go. What do you got? 3.98. That's good, she put on about half a kilo. Yep. Two weeks. Yeah, just in two weeks, that's good. Good little girl. Now for the part that's not fun. Every animal at the Australian Reptile Park is individually identifiable. And although everyone knows little Alira here, Tim needs to make sure that she can be tracked her whole life. And what we do is just get beneath the shoulder blades. And microchipping is the most efficient way to achieve that. And what we do is just... Between the shoulder blades, one, two, three. That's it, little 
done. That's it. And you're done. You're done. Good girl, that's it. That's it, come here. Oy. That's it. That's the bad part. You're done. Now you can come for a walk. Wombats have big claws for digging. Soon, little Alira will be spending more time outside, where she can dig and wear them down. You want to come for a walk, wear those claws down? Come on. Alira's at an age now where she needs to be out in the big world. You're a good little girl. You're a good little girl. Come on. This is the good part. She's had a big day. She'll go straight to sleep in a minute after a bottle. A big day for you, Missy. All right, that's enough. Thank you. You ready for your sleep? There you go. In your pouch. I'll see you a bit later. And we'll see you later on Danger Wild Animals.